The Tin Man hides a can. What is the things you guys say to prep for? Red leather, yellow leather. Red, yellow leather, leather. Red, no. seashore. seashells, seashells by the seashore. That's <laughs> easy. <laughs> Hi, you guys, and welcome back to the Creme Kitchen. I promised a viewer requested recipe. I always follow through with my promises. And today we will be making the perfect chicken fried steak. So let's get started. First thing is first, and I went out and bought some cube steak. You wanna start with cube steak, okay? This is not really anything you wanna do at home. They have a special machine back in the butcher department, okay, that they do this with. And it just makes it easier for you. I do like to pound them still. I know people buy them this way and fry them up. But I like a nice, even, and uh, sometimes I find them to be a little too thick, too. So we're gonna get them all the same size. Flat side of the meat mallet. Here we go. Just pound your meat. Yeah. Just pound your meat. <laughs> Ava, do you wanna pound some meat? <laughs> Meat's been pounded, here we go. I find it interesting that there's so many recipes out there for chicken fried steak, but let's think about the name for a little bit, okay? It's chicken fried steak. World renowned chicken fried steak. And I thought about how I fry my chicken, so I'm gonna kind of base this recipe off of how I do that. Makes sense, right? I have six cube steaks here. So now I wanna marinate them just like I do my chicken. I'm gonna use buttermilk and we'll see how that turns out. Mm-hmm. Show us the can. Made by chicks. Mm. 100 calories, no sugar. I can feel the weight coming off of me every time I take a sip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I've got my buttermilk. Just make sure you give it a good shake. Sometimes buttermilk separates as it sits. We'll start with a cup and a half. You know what, I'm just going for it. Two cups. Two cups of buttermilk, two eggs. Now, I know a lot of recipes ask for dredging your cutlets in a seasoned flour mixture, then the egg mixture, then breading mixture. I have found when you're trying to keep these warm, if you're trying to do more than two or three at a time, it'll separate. And so I've done this with my chicken before. Just skip that whole flouring thing. The buttermilk and the eggs, anything's gonna adhere to that. It makes it so easy and you get to skip a step. Buttermilk is gonna tenderize these steaks too. What else is a classic ingredient in fried chicken? Just a couple dashes of Tabasco. The original liquid pepper sauce made at Avery Island, Louisiana. Not for the heat, flavor only, you guys. And now we whisk. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I got it everywhere. Hold on. All right, whisking done, I promise. Now we marinate. The cube steaks go back into the same bag. They're all perfectly uniform. And then we put the buttermilk marinade right inside the bag. Or outside the bag. <laughs> Whatever works for you. And we're gonna let this rest in the buttermilk marinade anywhere from one to two hours and just let it do its thing. It's making it nice and tender. See you back here. All right, so our steaks have marinated in our buttermilk mixture and they are ready to go. So now we need to make our dry mixture. Salting crackers. Premium freshness, premium crunch. I'm gonna start with about a third of a sleeve. I'm looking for about a half cup. Using that same mallet, I'm gonna crush these up and hopefully get around a half a cup. We'll see. I want a nice, fine crumb to this, okay? Let's just see, I'm pretty good at measuring. Yeah, half a cup, going in. 
Now for the flower, I'm going to use my Wondra. It's really flower? New gold medal Wondra. Instantized flower. You know, I love this when I'm frying. I used it in my uh, walleye, our crispy pan fried walleye recipe that we did a while back ago, and it's fabulous. So trust me on this one. Cup and a half. Two teaspoons of kosher salt. About a half teaspoon or so of fresh ground pepper. Teaspoon of Lowry's. Let's go with half a teaspoon of paprika. Quarter teaspoon each of garlic powder and onion powder. And then we whisk. You wanna get it nice and evenly distributed, all those wonderful spices. Okay. We've got everything situated. My oven is on 200 degrees just to keep these warm till we're ready to serve. Our oil, we have it at around 350 and we're ready to dredge and fry. So let's move over to the cooktop. Get a nice coating on here and get it into our oil. You don't wanna overcrowd the pan. We're looking to cook these for about three to four minutes each side. You don't really want to mess with them too much when they're frying. Okay, now I'm going to fry up the rest of my cutlets. We fried our chicken fried steak. I have them keeping warm in my 200 degree oven, okay? It smells fantastic in here. It smells like a diner, is what I was telling Ava. Now we need to talk about the gravy, because you can't have chicken fried steak without gravy. We've got a lot of dark burnt parts in there, so what I'm gonna do is pour off some of the fat and then wipe out the pan with a paper towel. My pan is still warm, it's time to make the gravy. I'm gonna use three tablespoons of the leftover pan grease and three tablespoons of melted butter. Because butter makes everything taste better. Listen, I did not say this was healthy, but this will be fantastic, trust me. Once our butter and oil have come together and the butter's melted, we're gonna add in our Wondra flour, okay, as a thickener. We're gonna cook it for about a minute or so. You want equal amounts. So we're looking for about a quarter cup and two tablespoons or six tablespoons. All right, and you guys, this is cream gravy. You need to have some half and half. We're doing four cups. We're gonna see what that looks like. You may think that this seems like a lot of gravy, but let me explain the method to my madness here. I love gravy, first of all. I think all my kids love gravy. And if you're serving this, what are you gonna serve it with? Mashed potatoes. I, you have to, okay? And that may be coming up sometime soon in a recipe. You just have to be on the lookout. However, you want extra gravy. The only added thing we want to do to this is salt and pepper. And salt and pepper is to taste. Some people like it saltier than others. Okay, you guys, cream gravy is done. It's fantastic, if I do say so myself. And I have somehow convinced Lucas to come back on camera. He loves me so much and misses me so much. He actually was like, yes, mom, anything for you. Look how gorgeous this is. You wanna try this? Yeah. At least I know he's always gonna give me his very honest opinion. You got it okay? Yep. That's good. A man of many words. Okay, gravy, here we go. Love it, love the gravy. Make sure you make this because your potatoes will love it. I hope you're happy with this recipe. It actually is easy. It tastes great. Your family and friends will thank you. Please like and subscribe.
Maybe you'll get to see more of this guy, right? Maybe I will too. I don't know, right? I don't know. All right. Anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs> and until next time in our kitchen, I'll see you back here.